Hi, this is Cherish Liao. I've traveled close to 9,000 miles to the center of innovation here in California to really find out about how it is like to work and live in Silicon Valley and the surrounding uprising startup hubs in California. So join me on this explorative journey in Life in the Valley, the Digital Goat Rush. Silicon Valley is about chasing dreams about who you want to be. Silicon Valley is basically an all-boys school for entrepreneurs. Silicon Valley is about surrounding yourself with successful individuals to push your own ideas and your own endeavors to the next level. This is the story of Silicon Valley, portrayed through the eyes of Malaysians and Americans who work and live within the technology startup ecosystem. So when we say Silicon Valley, it's usually we refer to the whole area between San Francisco all the way down to San Jose. Um, the heart, you're right, the heart of the startup space used to be around Palo Alto, uh, Mountain View, Menlo Park, but it's starting to um, kind of move over, the center is moving over to San Francisco. Uh, I guess the, the city has something to do with it, where they are provi providing startups with a lot of incentives to set up shop here. So uh, it was interesting because just, you know, two, three years ago, when we, well, whenever I come over to visit my clients in, in Silicon Valley, I spend more time around Palo Alto. But uh, more and more, um, you know, I'm spending time in San Francisco instead. So you can start to see the pattern of the uh, migration of startups to San Francisco. Well, um, I was very young at the time. So, I mean, my perspective then is very different than it was now. Uh, I remember when I moved out here in, in 2000, I, I was probably like 20, 21. And um, I remember all I really cared about was, was working. And I, I was like so happy to be here, like just around all these like, all these nerds that were coding all the time. And um, that's, that's kind of all I, all I really noticed or cared about. And I remember um, this was back when we lived in uh, Redwood City. And um, there was one time when a, a friend of mine came to visit from out of town and we went to San Francisco. We went to, a, we went to a bar, which is like a very, very rare thing for me. I never really left, left the office or the house. And um, we were at a bar and I was, I was talking to a girl and she said, where do you live? And I said, I live in um, Palo Alto. And she said, wow, that sounds kind of boring. And I was like, I was totally shocked. I was like, why? It's like the most exciting place you could possibly be. Like there's just, like everyone there is building something amazing or, or working on something, something cool. And you're around all these creative people. So Xiong had been writing these algorithms to, it was speed dating back then. We were doing online speed dating where you would like, sit down in front of your laptop and you would talk to like 20 people <laughs> and for one minute each. And so Siang was writing this code and I was talking, I was talking to Sharif like late one night on Google chat, it was over like Christmas break. By the way, Sharif is the guy that the, invested in the company. Okay, the founder, yeah. of, sorry, the founder of Dev Bootcamp. Um, and so Sharif was like, yeah, I love this idea. And uh, he just said, I will, I'll give you guys a check if you want to like focus on it and I want to be an investor. So. That's when we took his money and worked on it yeah. full time. You see the timing is right? Yeah. And you have the opportunity to work on something that you think you're really interested in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think you could tell that, like, we're, that we're passionate about this space because I felt the frustration from dealing with it. And so I think, I think it's hard to fake that. When you're talking to an investor, it's really hard to like, fake enthusiasm for a product or yeah. an idea. And so that's like, when we talked to Paul Graham, he could clearly tell that we were not passionate about what we were working on, and it wasn't even a challenging problem either. So, okay. yeah. Did you hear? <laughs> when I walked in, the first thing she asked me was, 
You look like you have something on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I met both of them through Jared, which is my co-founder right now. Yeah, but I don't actually remember where we met and how we met. Okay. Well, we all went to the same school. We yeah, but we all went to the same school. Do you guys hang out or? Once in a while. Whenever we're in Palo Alto, we hang out. And whenever whenever they come up to San Francisco, yeah. they usually give us a shout and we go for a drink or something. Do you guys have a favorite place that, you know, normally you guys would hang out? Jared, whenever Jared comes up uh, and whenever he's with anybody, we usually meet at a place called The Attic, which is a bar on 24th Street. Um, really, kind of a, really dimly lit. Yeah. Likes to have this red lighting and dark and grungy. Yeah, it's just kind of a tradition, I guess. Um, <laughs> And then afterwards, we go to Takaria Cancun. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of the outdoors. And uh, the great thing about the location of San Francisco is that within an hour, an hour and a half drive in any given direction of the city, um, you can find something new and different. There's hiking trails, a 15 minute drive across the Golden Gate Bridge that are just great on the weekends. There's beaches all up and down the coast here that you can get to in less than half an hour. Um, you can drive down to Santa Cruz, Monterey, Car Carmel, which are all just beautiful beachside towns, great restaurants and stuff, and they're all you know, an hour and a half, two hours away. Um, so location is great, and there's plenty of opportunities to take a weekend trip but not have to go that far and uh, and do a lot of stuff outdoors so the first Malaysian that I visited is Jay Liu who based in Sunnyvale California one of the things that I find fascinating is robots so when I say Jay Liu has my dream job I kid you not uh, this this screen right here is just a regular iPad that you slide in and it connects to the wheels over Bluetooth and the idea is that you can it's like video conferencing but on wheels and you can connect to it from anywhere in the world uh, so this this is my office here okay. <clears throat> come on in so. <clears throat> it's it's a little messy I apologize so should I just yeah please just take have a seat please here? have a seat yeah uh, please have a seat wow. it's all messy okay. it's a it's a startup and uh, we don't have a lot of room here so my my office also is a doubles as a storage room these are two these are two robots that are ready to ship uh, we have a customer who will come and pick them up later uh, same as that one also and these are just some uh, travel boxes I travel quite a bit with uh, with double and so okay. these are these boxes a little bit beat up. And uh, so, yeah, well, welcome to my very messy office. Well, <laughs> but this is what see, it's like in a startup. I can see that you have your biker jacket behind yeah, you and the helmet right here. Well, it definitely tells a lot about your personality. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an uh, adrenaline junkie. <laughs> adrenaline junkie. So being in a startup itself, it's, it tells also a lot about how you perceive your well how you perceive your life basically you say mm -hmm. you're an adrenaline junkie so you feel like that's excitement to be in a startup it is and at the same time i can see that reflect in your <laughs> lifestyle as well i guess that's true i didn't really think about it that way but yeah so in this room itself what do you normally do for at double robotics yeah so at double i do a lot of the the, the f uh, business side of things so everything from customer support to sales to marketing business development uh, trade shows, demos, interviews, press, uh, all of the above. Uh, so I came to the U.S. in 2000. Uh, I came here to further my studies after uh, high school in, in Bukit Murtajam. I, I uh, went to Louisiana to study computer science. And so my first four years was in Louisiana. And so there, there was a little bit of adjusting because, you know, culture shock, a little bit of culture shock, I guess, you know, coming to a very different country, very different people, different food, everything. Uh, but, but after a while, I, you, you get used to it, and I like the culture here. It, it, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's almost 14 years that I've been here now, so I've assimilated, if you will. And, uh, and then I, I would say that 
aside from the, the obvious, which is, you know, uh, differences in food, skin color, language, you know, just like those ethnic type differences. There's also, there's also a huge difference between um, here at Silicon Valley and, uh, and Louisiana. So same country, but very different parts of uh, the country and the culture of the people here is also very different there. And I think Silicon Valley is like the closest to what I want to be, where I want to be. And so I like the culture here the best. So when you talk about a culture in Silicon Valley that you love a lot, what, how do you want to describe the culture in Silicon Valley? Right, so I'm, I'm very deeply embedded in the startup culture. So like obviously in Silicon Valley, you also have like mechanics of fixed cars, right? But, uh, but I'm very deeply embedded in the uh, startup culture. And so the startup culture here is um, lots of risk taking. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, for, this place attracts, it's a center of gravity, it attracts people from not just around the US, but around the world. Every day, someone, lots of people move to Silicon Valley to start companies. These are like the best, you know, and brightest in their field. And rather than going a traditional route, they said that, hey, you know what, I'm going to try something entre entrepreneurial, maybe start my own company, and they all come here. So lots of risk taking. Uh, over 90, some, something like 90 or 95% of people will fail. And so the odds are really bad if you think about it. But then people do it all the time because, you know, like risk taking culture, you have a lot of smart people here. And, and uh, you have to give some credit to the investors here too because the investors here, they're, they understand that, you know, this is a game of risk and sometimes they will bet on uh, entrepreneurs that are not proven. Uh, and, and so that's, you know, a lot of risk taking on their, their part also. So wow, once I enter the room, the first thing I can see is like, is this sort of like a game room for you guys this is at our, the entrance? Yeah, this <laughs> is our game room slash lobby. We've got a ping pong table, foosball, and uh, we also have uh, our, our, our team members play uh, musical instruments. So this is our, our band. Wow, it feels very inviting already. Once yes. you enter the room, then you see everything. Probably I can start a game with you right away. I'm yeah, yeah I, I'm not very good <laughs> at this, but. So rent is really expensive. Rent, uh, so, but outside of rent, everything else, you know, in terms of food, uh, petrol prices, it's, it's about okay. It's all right, it's yeah. affordable. Yeah, it, it, I would say outside of rent, everything else is actually not bad. Uh, I mean, obviously if you compare um, uh, Silicon Valley to Louisiana, Louisiana is a lot cheaper to live Everything is a lot cheaper there, but then of course you don't, you don't you don't have the kind of companies and people coming out of there, right? So here I would say that rent is the most expensive thing, but outside of rent, everything else is is actually very reasonable. Food is great. Um, Silicon Valley, you have all the immigrants from around the world moving here to start companies, and so like virtually any cuisine you, you want to find in Silicon Valley, you can find. There are like three Malaysian restaurants here within a 15-minute drive that I that I go to pretty frequently. Uh, and, and like, yeah, so everything else is, it's nice here. We uh, use the back camera of the iPad as the downward facing camera. So if there's an obstacle right in front of me, like my foot here, you can see uh, that it's, uh, there's an obstacle. Uh, and, and the way we implement the back camera is we put this mirror at a 45 degree angle right here. And so the back camera actually looks downwards. Uh, do you yeah. see any challenges for immigrants? Yeah, or just uh, foreign talent? Mostly, mostly because it's hard to get a work visa. OK. Yeah, so uh, this, is a, this is specific to the US law. But uh, in general, it's hard to get a, a, a permanent resident or what they know as a green card. Uh, it's actually really hard to get. So for me, I, I was first on a student visa, and then I got a work visa, and then now I'm here. But, but for most people, for most immigrants, the immigration status is the challenge. I, I'm going to have to show you the, uh, one of the most important parts of uh, being in a startup here. Most important part, yeah. which is food. Yep, food and <laughs> snacks. and. <laughs> so this is the kitchen. And uh, we have a feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> coffee machine, water, yeah. and uh, this is this is one of the best parts. Uh, snacks. You get, you get all the healthy Fruits. and unhealthy snacks yeah. that you want. So lots of yes. junk food, 
chocolate, chips, and all sorts of uh, all sorts of uh, drinks. And uh, we, I, I think we've got we've got beer in the fridge also, <laughs> and uh, and ramen noodles and cereal and and uh, yeah. So like, um, people of you know just grab whatever they want. How and often do you stay overnight? For uh, an all nighter and all that. Once this in will a while, come in handy. When, whenever it requires, when, whenever there's a crunch, you know, and we need to get something done, we'll, then we'll spend a lot of time here, and and so all the snacks come in really handy. Do you guys cook? I no. See that. Uh, well, actually, no? once in a while, once in a while we'll cook. Most of the time, we we buy food and we eat out here. Actually, this is this is our little dining area. Wow. So this is. Well, I like it here. Yeah. <laughs> so. This is where you guys is, have yeah. barbecue, yep. picnic, and barbecue. all that. This this place is partially open air, so that part's open, and you know, so we're we're pretty shaded. Uh, if there's rain, we're shaded, and this is just where we have our daily lunch and dinners. The the the, the nice thing about Silicon Valley is that it's it's. It's a really good example of a meritocracy where people don't single you out because of your differences in skin color or because you have a funny accent, none of that. Uh, people here really care about the value of what you bring to the table. So if you were you know, an expert in some field, uh, very niche, but then you're an expert, you know, they'll invite you to come to speak and you could speak with a funny language, you could smell funny, you could wear funny clothes. Nobody cares, like literally nobody cares because all they care is, you know, what matters, right? And so people are good at separating what matters and what doesn't matter. So you could dress funny, I mean, nobody cares. Being in a high-tech startup in Silicon Valley is very fast-paced and exciting. My experience uh, outside of Double Robotics to date before this is uh, mostly all software companies. Mm -hmm. So not a lot of hardware experience. Uh, so mostly the software and software you don't run into a lot of challenges that a hardware company ha run, runs into. So uh, this is a little bit, uh, it's a bit of a stretch goal for me also. But that's great, right? Because in a startup you stretch yourself and that's how you grow. So you face challenges and you rise up and deal with them. Here's a classic story which happens all the time. You know, some bright high school kid, right, finishes high school, or maybe he's still in high school, you know, but he's really good at programming and he moves here and he starts a software company and it takes off, right? The, the barrier to entry for a software company is you just need the skills and a, and a computer, that's mm -hmm. it. But the barrier to entry for a hardware company is a lot higher because you need to have the funds to pay for your materials. You need to have the really expensive tools, which I showed you. Yeah. And so the barrier to entry for a hardware company is a lot higher. Uh, with software, you just need programming skills mostly. Uh, w with a hardware company, not only do you need the programming skills, you need electrical engineering skills, uh, mechanical engineering skills, industrial design skills. So it takes uh, you know more skill sets to build you know something that people actually want to buy. This is our CNC mill. Okay. So whereas with a 3D printer, mm -hmm. you make 3D objects. Uh, it's an additive process because you make the 3D objects layer by layer. Okay. Uh, a, a, a CNC mill is a, a subtractive process. So you give it you give it a block of metal or aluminum or you know, and and uh, and you you and it actually cuts out whatever you don't want. So, you know, uh, so for instance, this is, so this piece right here used to be just a block of aluminum, and then we, we cut out all the uh, parts that we don't want to get what we want. So it's a subtractive process. Um, and, and yeah, so we use this for making parts of the robot, okay. prototyping as well, and, uh, and. It must be really expensive. Yeah, it, so it there's. It looks expensive. There's, so this is a, a $70,000, uh, uh, machine, and you wouldn't just normally find this in someone's home, right? Yeah. But there's a but there's a special story <laughs> behind this. So one of the co-founders, he did a custom job for uh, a celebrity. Okay. And and uh, and so that's that's what paid for uh, this this machine. It's more important that you focus on a real problem that can build a huge business around, and the money will come. You can find them here. You have. 
in Silicon Valley, you do have investors who have the appetite for high risk investment. Yeah. So um, some investors are low risk investors because they're not willing to put money in things that are high risk. But here you have high risk investors. So don't worry about the money, worry more about the business that you want to build. That's, that's what I would say. People now sort of understand it as it's the place to, to be if you want to do something innovative. Why is that? Well, first of all, the venture capital is here. Okay. Um, and um, th there's, a, there's this critical, there's a, a critical mass is very important. The idea that your partners are, are right down the block um, you know, or your, your potential, your potential partners. You can do it. You can walk. You can go to lunch with someone and do a deal. Uh, is is still very useful. You might think, well, you know, everybody will just, you know, you'll just Skype or, or uh, set up a Google Hangout and you can talk to anybody in the world. But it really does help to be near where. Mm -hmm. All these other smart people are 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 working as well. Um, it also, frankly, has uh, the advantage because there are so many, um, you know, bright engineers uh, available. It means if you want to start a company, there are people to hire. Okay, it's very easy to hire top people if your company is located in the valley. It's not true if you're in, you know, the middle of the country someplace. Fortunately, I was able to grow up here and see kind of things happening here. And then when I left to go to, uh, to Austin, Texas, it wasn't only it was then that I saw that I was missing out everything back home, and that's why I came back. Um, I think that what makes Silicon Valley uh, more uh, it's just a, a hub for innovation and entrepreneurship is that a lot of people are, and you said this a second ago, are attracted to come to Silicon Valley. They go here for school. Um, they end up staying because they have opportunities here, and so they're coming from all over. And we're fortunate to, enough to have a, a cultural melting pot in Silicon Valley of different perspectives from all over the world, so that when they do study here, start their companies, they can either choose to stay here or go back to their countries to take what they've learned, um, and really, really kind of take advantage of the mentorship and the network of people here and all the exciting experience that we have in the valley. Silicon Valley has a culture of risk taking, of pride in failure. You know, there's nothing wrong in Silicon Valley about starting a company that fails and then starting another one and starting another one. People wear a failed startup as a badge of honor because they, they don't see it as a failure but as a learning opportunity. And that shift of viewpoint enables us to try things that other areas of the world may be too risk averse to try. Um, I'd say in, in parallel with that is the openness to new ideas, the openness to try new things. Um, disruption is a key phrase you hear in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and it's a phrase that everybody takes to heart. We, we look at any problem or any industry and say, how is this broken and how can we fix it? It's, it's not a matter of staying inside the traditional box that people or industries have always been in, but how can we break the boundaries of that box, change the world so that it fits more with how we think things should be. It's a very idealistic culture in that aspect. Next week in Life in the Valley, the Digital Gold Rush. Sunnyvale is a small town compared to like San Francisco, and this is sort of where, where people focus on their startups. And I think you go to San Francisco when you get a little bit bigger and funded. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, like when we went through Y Combinator back in 2009, they said, you know, live here because it's close to us. Come on, y'all. Yeah. If anybody read Orson Welles, this is what we are living right now. This is Hacker Nation the Making Wells. Guys, episode three with Jared Siong. Orson Welles predicted this. Working in a startup, your vision can be very sort of myopic, and you have this specific goal in mind, which is to launch your company. And equally as important are meeting other people and beginning to foster relationships. Silicon Valley is a state of mind. It's not necessarily a place.